Hello and welcome my friends. Welcome to some very exciting full moon energy. Today we're going to ex be exploring the full earth or the full warm moon energy. And this may be kind of a squishy, weird kind of full moon. However, the squishy, weird energy is really what we need. So some of us, now anybody in North America that's at the top part, <laughs> Um, probably still frozen. However, historically, this is when we start to see the, the earthworms starting to move around, starting to aerate our, our gardens and our space. Uh, like I said, uh, here in Canada, especially where I am, not so much earthworming. Frozen. <laughs> However, people further south, definitely, definitely. So we can start to see that movement and we need that. Many of us have been feeling so heavy, so stuck, so bleh. The, the worm does help us. And I'm really excited to see how this full worm moon energy is going to help you with getting unstuck, getting you feeling more, well, movable, I guess. Now, for this reading, I was, I know that I just said that the northern part of Canada, the northern um, area is frozen, but I did want to use the northern animal tarot just because of how fantastic it is. And I just, I love this, this energy that comes from it. And then I've combined it with the sacred earth oracle. Again, that very grounded stability. And stability is going to be the name of the game when we're looking at movement and getting self unstuck. All right, let's look at this. What can my friends expect from their time in the full worm energy? I love this deck. I, I've said that, right? It's on a linen card and it just shuffles so well. The energies are just so fantastic. It was a Kickstarter um, that I supported oh, many, many moons ago. Uh, she actually had a second edition Kickstarter come out last year. I just really love this card. Like the, the, the feel of the actual card. I don't know if the linen will, you can kind of see it there. It just feels nice and it's not too shiny. Um, a lot of cards get really shiny and it's hard for um, us to see them on, on camera. So this is the King of Wands and he was reversed. So Kings are the most fully developed personality. They have the most control and power. This is about that passion, that connection into what we're doing. Well, it's disconnected. It's on its head, which talks about that overwhelming kind of ugh, energy that we're feeling. And like I said, it was, it's the full earth or the full warm energy really talks about that movement. We're coming up into the, the spring equinox in a couple of weeks. We're starting to see that shift, that thaw. How can you use these energies that are naturally occurring to your advantage? How can you start to see that, that, that thaw, that turn that we need? We need to turn this king from on his head and kind of disempowered into sitting in his throne, upright, large, and in charge. And the trick with the king of wands is he's not sitting back in his chair going, oh, this is great. No, in the original deck that Pamela Coleman Smith drew, he's kind of ready for his next, he's ready to, to leap forward. We need that enthusiasm. We're missing that. And it's very clear here, very evident that we want to connect in with that energy. I love this. So good. Okay. So this deck, it's, um, part of the Kickstarter was extra Oracle cards. I like reading the whole shebang together because it just gives more of a kind of a fun, comprehensive reading. This of course talks about that fear right? It's ingrained. It's in us. It's those skeletons or ghosts in the closet that we're like, Oh, no. Oh, ah. 
when we start to take off that fear, empowering us, again, we feel very disempowered. We're going to see some of those patterns that we want to break. Some of those things that we need to and want to do. Another trick with this card, and it's very, very evident here, are these little globally bits. Now, there's a lot of talk about those these discs or... or um, I know that, uh, who is it, Diana Cooper talks a lot about them, but the orbs, the light orbs, archangels. I've also seen them come in as fairy energy, the high vibrational energy being photographed. And that was very intentionally put in, in differing, like you can see it in differing hues, so intensities, knowing that, yeah, we have that fear, but at the same time, guys, around and surrounding that fear, we have helped to release and transmute that energy. We have those high vibrational beings there for us. We need to break down the law of free will to ask for the help. That's a big piece, asking for the help that we need and that we want. Because, yeah, this is how we're feeling. The Ten of Swords. That overwhelming, ugh, energy. Now, peace with the swords. This is a bloodless impalement. There is no blood there. It, it's all about that psychological, emotional, spiritual heaviness. Does it transmute to our physical body? Absolutely. We feel it in our shoulders and our backs. We just feel, ugh, some of us get it in our head. We have it there. The piece with this is, is that we're carrying a lot of weight, past experiences. Know that it's part of this lifetime, past lifetimes, and then also lifetimes of past loved ones. So our ancestral family. It's a lot. We don't need to identify each sword and remove it slowly each time because that's a lot. That's only going to aggravate that fear. What we need to do is start to look at what we can remove in the here and now and look at removing things slowly throughout our journey. We don't want to try and rip out these things too quickly because that fear, that pain will consume us. The full worm moon is really clear that yes, we're going to work on some of these swords. Not all of them. We're not there yet. However, we need to embrace that sun. This is a sunrise. The new dawn is coming. It's a 10. Tens are about endings and beginnings. So it's up to us. We can stay in this impaled kind of blah state, feeling disempowered, fearful, just kind of ugh. Or... And this is the or is going to require you to do some work. Start to release some of this. Now, I know that sounds like a lot. You're like, great, how the heck do you do that? Well, let me help you with that. I have a number of meditations that can help release stuff without revisiting it and re-traumatizing self. Um, good ones to start off with, of course, is the uh, meditation I did with Archangel Metatron back in 2020 where it's releasing the pain. We don't need to revisit where that came from. Let's just release the pain. So if you do that meditation, what I would suggest, because again, swords are about knowledge. We need that knowledge. Ask the high vibrational beings to help you that night when you go to sleep to identify patterns that you need to be aware of so that we don't re-impale ourselves. Break that pattern. Swords that, like I said, are all about the the knowledge. Well, the challenge with, well, most of the sword suit is that the energy that is, or the feelings that are connected to these swords are low vibrational. Fear, sadness, pain. So we can't do anything with it. If these events and situations, this learning, was surrounded by positive stuff, we would have been like, oh, that's great. That's going to fuel us. We're going to feel empowered. We're going to go. But we're not. We're feeling overwhelmed. We're feeling blah. We're feeling ah. So 
Let's release the pain. See what swords that will follow quite naturally. Allowing us to get rid of it, releasing it, and then learn from it. Again, we don't have to revisit it. We don't need to re-trigger ourselves. We can ask for the pattern. What pattern is causing you this problem? Because when we identify the pattern, we're going to start to release more of the Ten of Swords because it's in the patterns that we need to break rather than just breaking the pain. Because breaking the pain, it's like um, how a cough is a secondary to a virus. Sure, we address the cough, but we need to look at the virus itself sometimes. And that's very much what we want to do here. Release the pain, so get rid of the cough, and let's look at what's causing it. And when I say that, I'm not looking at, oh, let's look into like the, the, the squishy bits of it. Let's look at it as a global. What's that, that pattern that keeps coming up? When we start to look at the pattern and releasing the pain, you're going to start to feel better. And all, if all we can get done in the full worm moon is releasing some of that pain and empowering self, that's going to go a long way in making you feel stronger and more able to enjoy the step into spring and all that is going to happen in the next couple of weeks, months, and years. So a little bit of work goes a long way, guys. Oh, and I should mention, if you guys are new here, welcome. I do have lots of meditations, lots of healings that I have on this channel. I give you guys the guidance, but what's more, the tools to help you through it. When I say a meditation, all my meditations, healings, mindfulness tools, they're all guided. So it's an easy support. So, using this to your advantage, guys. Using this time for you. And it's not long periods of time. Most of my meditations last for about 30 minutes. And some of the, I, I do have a playlist that it's like 10, 5 to 10 minutes long. So you can fit it in. So let's look at what further guidance and support will help my friends embrace this release. And this shift of energy to empower them, to feel stronger. Like, come on, like... Many of us are at a, a point of doneness or we're just surviving. And that survival mode is, it's almost disempowering us in many ways because we're missing out. We're missing out on the joy, the happiness, the understanding that comes with our every day. The Queen of Cups. One of the most creative cards in the deck and the second most intuitive card. She's the everyday personification of the high priestess. This talks about that nurturing energy. She also talks about that lunar energy. She's the kind of the embodiment, if you will, of the high priestess. So we have that healing, uh, nurturing energy, that divine feminine. Please use that to your advantage. We're coming in on a full or on a full moon energy, which is the goddess energy. Use that to your advantage. Additionally, on Tuesday, when the full worm moon comes in on, in its full state, we're going to be I'll be posting uh, a new healing and it's a divine feminine healing in celebration of International Women's Day. And it's very much about that healing. Yes, we want to release and um, get rid of some of that heaviness. We also need to heal self from that. And that's why I really encourage the Archangel Metatron uh, meditation because we are re releasing that, heal or that fear, that pain, and healing that spot. We need to heal it so that it doesn't just um, fester back. It's just like, again, like a wound. You wanna clear it out. And we want to do that as well. That little bit of compassion for self will go a long way in not only your growth and development, but your ability to engage, balance, create. How I'm getting this, we've got the king and the queen, masculine and feminine. 
So again, we have that balance. No matter what gender we identify with, we have both within us. We need that balance. So that's something that's really off key. I do have a meditation where it's just balancing out the masculine and the feminine within us. Additionally, the wand is that passion-based creativity. The cup, the intuitive-based creativity, which is the yin and yang of creativity. And that creativity really helps us get unstuck, helps us to embrace that dawn. Win-win in all directions. The devil, the 15th card in the major arcana. And I love the fact it's got the antlers and the like the, ooh, scary. <laughs> And it does talk about walking away from that low vibrational self. That low vibrational self that disempowers us. Will it be a challenge? Absolutely. Your ego is not going to allow you to easily walk away from this. It's going to bring up that fear. It's going to bring up that pain. So should fear come in? Call in Archangel Michael. He helps with that stability. He helps with that protection. That sadness, I've got, I already said that meditation. And I do have a protection meditation I did with Archangel Michael. So the meditation I did with Archangel Metatron helps with the pain. The one with Archangel uh, Michael helps with the protection. Also, if you start to feel really unstable, you can call them in, help you to release some of this, help you to feel stronger, more stable, help you to see. The Four of Cups. So the Three of Cups in front of him are serving him. There's nothing wrong with these Three Cups. They're not the Three of Cups in, say, the Five of Cups that have the overturned cups that have, like, really funky substances in them. These are Three Cups. He's like, okay, is this, is this it? This talks about the blah, the complacency we have. The answer is no. We're missing a key element. The only way we can embrace this holy grail that has been seen already is by turning the king and releasing some of this pain and fear that we're housing. And the full warm moon is helping you with that. The four of swords reversed. So the four of swords, it kind of looks scary. Um, no, he's not going to be impaled here. This is the one of the few uh, sword cards that we're okay with as a whole because it, it talks about that rest and rejuvenation. However, we're not giving ourselves time for that. Hence, it's in reverse. We have resistance to it because it talks about taking care of ourselves. And well, we've got so many things we've got to do. How do I, I don't have time. We don't need to take long periods of time for this. We need to bring in that rest and rejuvenation. Bring in that meaning. And we can do that by, like I said earlier, literally asking for the help you need before you go to sleep. I really need to release some of that pain and heartache. I really need to get that rest so that I feel stronger physically. I have connection to that passion. I feel good when I wake up. Can any and all high vibrational beings support me in doing so? For my greatest good. You ask them before you go to bed. I always round it off with, and can you help me remember, big piece, remember what I need to know, what patterns I need to break, what I can work on right now that's going to be more meaningful. Then have a piece of paper and a pen at hand so you can write it down before you get up. So that information is there because I can tell you your ego will help you forget very quickly. It, it, it's the fantastic part of our ego. The eight of cups. And I kind of like the fact if you look here, she's got some sort of crustacean ish fish type thing here, really connected into that moon energy as the moon card has the, the crustacean coming out of the water onto the land, very much connected into that lunar energy. We've got the, the, the lunar phase here. Again, connecting in 
to what's at hand, reinforcing it. Lots of cups here, because what's going to help with that passion, with that release, is connecting into where we're focused, like where we're functioning from, that, that emotional self, releasing the pain and the fear, understanding it a little bit better. And when I say that, I mean, what is bothering you? Right? If you're feeling just overwhelmed, start to release stuff. We don't want to revisit it. We don't want to re-traumatize ourselves. We want to understand where we're functioning from so we can start to put in tools and nurture and take care of ourselves so we can start to bring in that connection to passion, bring in that understanding. And part of that is going to be using our head on what we need because we've been avoiding it to help us connect in to some of those elements that are really going to really make us feel better feel stronger and we need to look at that eight of cups as that reflection going inwards please do not go too deep we don't want to go in and traumatize ourselves like i said but we do need to know okay you know what fear is my biggest challenge i'm afraid to move forward and be honest with self guys pain pain is where it's at okay start to work with where you're at looking at how you're feeling then looking at how you can start to take back your control and then use your tools that that are there that are right at hand should you reach out and grab hold of them giving yourself permission and time and energy to engage in those tools to empower you what further support will help my friends to embrace the full warm moon. Embrace that cup, that holy grail. Repetition. So when it says repetition, things like I said, patterns, repeated patterns, we need to start releasing them. So I said, do the healing for or the, the, the healing meditation with Archangel Metatron to heal the pain, release the pain, and then ask that night for understanding of the pattern. Well, it's not like they're going to leave you a, a, a very clear memo or email or text. You're going to have to see the patterns in your everyday, which means being observant observant to uh, messages in your, your dreams, messages that are sent via repeated serendipity points throughout your day. So being present to what's around you. That's upside down. Clarity. The more you are aware of right now in the present, what's happening, the more you're going to be able to hold that holy grail. You'll have a better understanding of where you're at and what you need to take better control of self. And that's the one thing we can control. Know that what the full warm moon is starting is just a baby step forward. What you can get done in the next five days will not be the end all be all of what you need to do. It is very much a step up, a step forward forward in this process. So please have patience with you and take it slow. Start writing things down. Start seeing those patterns. It'll start to make sense. You'll get that clarity, that aha, and you're just going to start to empower you and you're going to see that, that fulfillment, that joy, that grasp of the Holy Grail that fills us, it makes things better, brings in prosperity brings in happiness and joy. And the full warm moon, like I said, when I sat down, I knew that this is going to be an important moon. So please enjoy this time. Don't get caught up in the pain or the fear. Enjoy what the full warm moon is giving you in whatever form it comes to you in. I want to thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope that this reading helped you to understand what the full warm moon is offering you. No, it's an offer. You need to do the work. 
and the work, like I said, it's a work in progress. This is just the getting the ball going. Now, if you did like this reading, please remember to give it a thumbs up as it helps people find me on the sea of YouTube. More importantly for you, please don't forget to subscribe as there is so much more coming forward and you don't want to miss any of it. Additionally, if you want an added layer of support, I do have a Patreon and Ko-fi page where I continue to support them on a little bit of a deeper level. I've left links below. You can go check it out for yourselves. Again, I want to thank you for joining me in this exploration on the full worm moon, and I hope that it helps you to really empower you to take control of you. Until tomorrow, my friends.